and they can't get it. Drugs can't give it to them. Women can't give it to them. Men can't give it to them. Money can't give it to them. I got the Holy Ghost. And you know what? He telling me things unlawful. Come out of a man's mouth. But he's got it in my heart. He's making him want to pop and glorify for what he's doing. Yeah. Woo! Stop slow. Thank you. I can't thank him enough this morning. And he done stooped down and came into our lives and whispered in our hearts, I love you. Yes. I'm going to be with you forever. Yes. I'm going to bring you through all this foolishness down here. And I'm going to bring you up with me and let you know how blessed you really are. You know, where the guy said, eyes have not seen, near, er, near have ears heard the goodness, the things that God has for those who love him. But it is revealed to us by his spirit. You know, it's a blessing when his spirit starts to fill you up with what only he has. That love, peace, and joy that belongs only in the kingdom of God of Jesus Christ. I am so blessed this morning. And what I love about him, see, you know, it's all one thing for one person to be blessed. But see, Jesus can bless everybody that, that, that they want to trust in him. Sister Renee was saying, yeah, I brought my blessing too. I brought my praise too. You know, and God can fill you with it. And you know what? And we always know Sister Sandra got here with her. So we're going to praise God and thank God. And all of us, all of us, God. And you know, we praise Him in a little different ways. You know, we thank Him in a little different ways. Some, some quiet, and that's okay. We'll be quiet. Some loud, and that's good too. You know, and some is in between. Some days I'm quiet, some days I'm loud, but I'm loud this morning. I got I got a, a loud feeling this morning to praise. So let's give him some clap and clap. Let's give him some thanksgiving. Let's give him some glory. to praise him. Choosing us to let us know all the great things that he's got available to them that love him and are willing to accept his word and grow into his many blessings many promises, many benefits that he and he alone can provide for the believer. Amen. Brother Phil, you on the line this morning? Yes. Yes. Praise yes. God. I didn't get a chance to greet you this morning. I, people was coming in and everything and I uh, didn't hear your voice, but I'm so glad to hear you he online with us to bless us. So I'd just like to ask you to open us up with a word of prayer, please. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, family. And you bless us, of course, our Father. Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come unto you. It's real low for some reason, uh, yeah. brother. Sorry. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you now. Okay, that's a great book. All right. Okay, okay, praise the Lord. Thank you. 
Uh, it was just I had my earphones going, but that when I'm listening to Ottawa, I, I can hear clear with the earphones, so I have to take them out. Okay, all right, let's, uh, let's pray. Thank you. Uh, dear Lord, uh, we thank you. Uh, we, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, praising you and thanking you for your goodness uh, to us and towards us, your involvement in our lives. We thank you that we woke up, Lord, in our sound mind. We thank you for the time that we had before you. Um, uh, this time, Lord, this morning as we prepared to come to church and in our hearts uh, to meet you in the congregation of the saints. And so, Lord, we are gathered in your name, asking you, Lord, to accept our praise, our worship, and our thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for uh, watching over our family and our loved ones. We thank you for of keeping them and allowing them, forgiving them for their shortcomings, their sins, Lord, and allowing them an opportunity to draw close to you. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Uh, Father, we ask that God you would allow us uh, to be light, continue to be light uh, in the lives of those that we're involved with or in our environment and our habitation. Uh, we ask God that you will uh, allow us to uh, uh, shine forth righteousness because of what you're doing in my heart. That you may receive the glory that you change and transform hearts and to conform them into the image of your dear son. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we you get the enemy that will come against the mind, that will come against the service. We ask that you are blessed and anoint, continue to be with an anointing. Uh, your man servant passed on. As far as this, we ask God that you will uh, um, hide him behind the cross. We pray, Lord, that all testimonies that have been, uh, that will receive uh, praises and thanksgiving that you will accept and will, the church will be exalted. Amen. Um, um, and that edified, that we be edified. We ask God that. Um, um, every aspect of the service be covered with the blood of Jesus. May he be lifted up. And for those that are uh, need of touching their body, you know, um, your touch with the feelings of the infirmities, we write, ask right now in the name of Jesus that you show your mercy and your grace and that you touch them in the area where they need healing, need strength, they need uh, encouragement. All this we ask in the word and name of our Lord and Savior. We want to make you hear and answer and that you love us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 We're going to open it up for any songs, any praises, any testimonies. Please feel free. Praise the Lord, I have, a, I have a testimony and a praise. This is Brother Kevin, I have a testimony and a praise. Go right praise ahead. the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, first, I, I, I want to start off by uh, just thanking, uh, you know, thanking Jesus for always, uh, you know, just, just keeping us by his power, and, you know what I mean, by his spirit. Uh, I thank him for, uh, you know, for the Holy Ghost, for discernment, I just thank him for life. I just thank him for his love. I thank him for his presence. He's always present. You know, I'm, I'm never, I'm never alone. We're, we're never alone. I'm, you know, I'm not speaking about myself, but I'm talking, speaking about all of us, the church, the body. You know, we're, we're never alone. Uh, you know, I've been, you know, I've been in this situation. This was a beautiful situation. I had to be reminded of how beautiful it was. I found myself. Uh, I slipped into. Uh, you know, becoming unpatient, and uh, I wasn't ungrateful, but the Lord reminded me that whatever spirit that crept in, that I was headed in the rainwater, becoming, getting ready to become ungrateful, but he stopped it and showed, you know, what, the, what spirit had, had, had crept in. Uh, you know, I've been in this situation, which is a beautiful situation. Uh, all of my stuff is being provided, but I just have this one job. But all my bills, I watch Jesus perform miracle after miracle, <laughs> month after month, and I thank Him for it. That's, that, that's my praise. I just thank you, Jesus, for the miracles that you're performing and how you, how you blessed me to be able to keep 
what you've given me, which is not yeah. beneath for me in my life in the 50 years that, that, I, that I've been living and that you've been showing me because I used to hang out with the thief. So what did I expect? <laughs> you hang out with the thief, you're not going to have nothing because he's going to steal for you. So you <laughs> tell me that I hang out with a giver. I hang out with my real father who loves me, which is Jesus, who loves me, who truly loves me and show me every day how much he loves me by how he provides for me, take care of my needs, and how I'm learning, which is the hardest thing, which is not really hard, but I'm learning now that the, the spirits are being put down. That uh, I don't have to fight for myself anymore. That's the biggest thing about salvation and something that we have to learn about not fighting for yourself anymore. Now we have someone to fight for, which is Jesus who gives us the victory over and over and over and over again. And I thank you, I just thank you Jesus for that. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the joy. I'm excited about the things that I'm learning. I'm excited about the fire that I'm in, even though sometimes my flesh don't like it. I'm excited about the fire. And Jesus keeps reminding me that I'm perfect to you, son, to make you into pure gold, and that you will be more like what you told me, girls. That's all. And I'm thankful for that. I give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, Jesus. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Always Jesus. Amen. Always Jesus. Always Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul for I have touched the hem of his garment and his blood has made me whole I've tried all I could Seems like nothing, nothing did me any good. Then I heard Jesus who was walking by. Then I decided to give him a try. Oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his garment. And his blood has made me whole. Yes, my Jesus, will he heal my body? When I was crying and when I was blue, for I have touched the hem of his garment, and his blood has made me whole. I've tried all I could, seems like nothing. Did me any good? Then I heard Jesus who was walking by. Then I decided to give him a child. Oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. It 
I was uh, on my way to church this, this morning, and I got to uh, the Tycone Bridge, because that's the bridge that I would take to get over here. And when I got to the bridge, the bridge just went down, so there was like tons of traffic. And I'm like, oh my Lord. I said, Lord, what should I do? Should I turn around and go back home and get on the line? And he told me, <laughs> he told me, don't turn around. And so I said, okay, Lord, okay. So I just, you know, got in all that traffic and, you know, got maneuvered. And I finally got across the bridge. And because I was so afraid I was going to be late to church that, you know, I'm like, oh my goodness. But, you know, I thank God that I was able to obey the spirit. Amen. And when he told me uh, to, to don't turn around, you know, I just thank God. I thank God. And I'm so glad that I'm here today. Amen. I'm really glad I'm here today. I feel really good. And I, I thank God for Sister Sandra for coming out to fellowship with us. Uh -huh. I, you know, it, it, it's funny because I had the same thing this morning. I was rushing to do something. And um, I was going to go to the bathroom. And I said, Lord, you know, I was rushing to do something. And I caught the trolley. So one, I, uh, one trolley had left. And, uh, and Casey said, well, my, why don't you? Because you know how Sunday, Sunday scepter is. And slow ain't the word. So I told her, I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going up the street. I said, I'm going to go to my church today. So when I got on there, uh, I got about two blocks. And when I thought about this, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. Only I know I know what he's done for me. And I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I had the opportunity, every time I come in here, I got something else to tell them all. I had an opportunity to get invited to uh, my girlfriend in their fellowship. Uh, these girls I grew up with, they in the church now, they say. So they said, uh, well, Barbara had called me first and she said, well, Lou's house is kind of small, so I wouldn't invite you, Sandra, but that's not my place, right? We all grew up together. So I told her, I said, that's fine, Barbara, because see, I didn't get invited on the prayer line, Kathy. Yeah, I didn't get invited on the prayer line. But you know what? But it's a purpose for all of that. I just don't do what everybody else do. I never did. I wasn't in what everybody else was in. I don't sit the plane this morning. One person is this way, another person is that way. But I'm beginning to thank God now for how he made me. Because however he made you, that was the way he wanted to make you. He didn't want to make you like somebody else. The tulip don't look like the rose, and the rose don't look like the daffodil. I they do everything is different. Anyway, about two days later, Lou called me. So she said, Sandra, if you're not doing nothing, I want you to come on down to fellowship. We're having a little fellowship breakfast. So I said, okay. So um, Kiki, that's Kiki's um, like godmother and them, right? 
So Kiki said, Mama, I'll drive you down. And, you know, uh, it's in South Philly, I'll drive you down. I said, well, good, I'll get a ride down there. And also, I, I was going to make a peach cobbler. I couldn't make no peach cobbler, so I messed around, made a bread pudding. You go and don't go in empty handed. But let me tell you something. You talk about the Lord bless my soul. When I got in there, it's a few that I grew up with, and there's other people that come because, you know, they got a prayer breakfast. But let me tell you what was humorous to me. I got to mention this. Because something always be humorous to me. Um, Joni, which is one of the head ones in the thing, they were celebrating 3,001 prayers. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, I said, well, I said, what did she say? I said, three th I said, girl, I probably about, I prayed about a thousand myself in one day. Now, this is a whole group. But they were celebrating the fact being that they had been on the line that many years. They've been on the line since 2015. Now, that's a long time, and it's now 2024. But they were celebrating, really, um, those many prayers that they felt like the Lord had intervened and answered. So now, so when we get there, I think maybe about eight or ten of us lose places small. So Joni opened it up, so she said she want everybody to introduce everybody, because everybody don't know everybody. And she said, just give a little, you know, a little say-so in the Lord. So everybody went around, went around, went around. I hadn't got on yet, of course. So anyway, uh, Mildred came in, Barbara, Joni, and all the rest of them. But let me tell you how the Lord got blessed. Ooh, you talk. I, 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 I get excited when I think about it. Maxine was there with her daughter, Dee Dee. Dee Dee came from Atlanta. Now, I grew up with Barbara, Maxine, and then we thought we was older than them, but they, they was about as old as us when we were young coming up. So Angie, she was there. You talking about a story. You talking about, but the thing that got me more than anything all of us as church people, and they, you know, saying, I thank the Lord for this, thank the Lord for that. But when it got Angie's turn, Angie's in the Lord now. She got saved. She got nine years and six months clean from drugs. Three, three months clean from alcohol. Angie was a hardcore lesbian, in and out of prison. You name it, Angie did it. Lord brought that girl out of so much darkness. But you know what? But I'm going to tell you something. Listening to her, being specific in detail about what she come out of. The rest of them sitting there, just as solemn as they could be. And I'm thinking to myself, you heard that girl testify like that? And ain't nobody moving, ain't nobody glorifying the Lord. I'm I, don't, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I'm telling you the truth. You know what I said? I said, you mean to tell me? I said, the angels in heaven rejoice. When you was, when you was saying, saying that this morning, you know what I thought about? I don't know about being loud. You know what? Heaven is never quiet. When somebody get delivered out of darkness, heaven ain't quiet about that, Stephanie. I'm telling you, when Paul, I'm going to tell you something. When I heard that girl's testimony, you know what? I got broke down and cried like a baby. You know what I said? I said, guess what? These church people can't even handle this. You know the reason why? Because everybody, everybody got so dignified now, Paul. Their clothes wasn't never dirty. They ain't never went into nothing dark. Paul, I was in darkness. I told Stephanie when I first came in this morning, right? You know what? Thank God. Paul, I wasn't supposed to be here. You know what? When we was in there talking, you know, what they, you know who they talked about? Everybody talked about Sandra, what Sandra used to be, what Sandra used to do. But you know what I thank God for, Brother Otto? I thank God for the one. God can see better in the dark than he can see in the light. Believe me, he can. He got me out of darkness. And I told Angie, I had to get up and grab that girl and hug that girl. You know what I told her? But she sat there, she put, see, you know, a lot of times people, when they testify, they testify minimal. They don't go too many places where they've been, what they've been through. And she was saying, she got a son that's locked up. And you know what she did? She blamed herself for her son being in prison. She said, had I not been in that life, I could have been a better mother. But you know what I told her? I said, but guess what? The blood of Jesus Christ is going to take care of every bit of that. All 
that pain is in their shame, nobody couldn't have been no more shaming than me. I was telling one of my daughters yesterday, when I lived, when I first moved in the projects, I lived at 7241, not 7243. It used to be a little church lady used to come and knock on the doors. Say, daughter, you got children, take them to church. I'd be high that Saturday night, Paul, messed up like a dog. That woman took my kids to church one for me to rest on a Sunday. She was doing the work of the Lord. They never accused me. They never looked at me wrong, Stephanie. None of that. And you know what I say today? I say, God, anytime you see the Lord bringing people out the way he bringing people out, and you can sit like a asylum, it's so it was, I'm telling you, you could have dropped a pen in there while that girl was talking. And guess what? I'm the only one crying. You would have thought somebody else would have. Yeah, I'm, I'm Paul, I'm telling you, these experiences for me is great. You know the reason why? Because I never want to sit in church and not cry. I never want to sit in church and not cry when God don't pull somebody out. Let me tell you something. I had a past. Every time he saw me, he was crying, Paul. Every time he looked at me, he was crying. And when you got to get to, I'm telling you, this world here today. And you know what I told Angie? I said, guess what, Angie? You can't make up to none of them. Maxine is in the church now. That's her mother. Dee Dee's in the church now. And you know what? She was so distorted and disdained. They didn't even call her name for years. For years, they never talked about her because they thought she was just that dirty. But you know what I said? What's stitching them? your nostrils? They ain't stitching God's nostrils. I praise him for all that, Paul. I mean, you know, every time I come in here, I have something to say. Because guess what? He raised me up to say it. I'm telling you how, though, the ones you count out, the ones you count out, those are the ones God is counting in. I'm telling you, when I sat there, and you know what I said? I said, Lord, you know what? I thank God you ain't making me churchy. Just solemn. Just this way and that way. I'm going to tell you something. There's a hurt world out right there. It's a hurt world out there, Paul. And you know what she did? She hugged me. She called me. And I don't want to talk to her all the time. I don't want to do that. But you know what I know? You know what I said? I said, if God got you, baby, he's going to keep you. He's going to take you through everything you got to go through. Don't he do it? Don't he do it? I don't. Won't the Lord do it? He took me through everything. I done had drug addicts in my house, crack addicts in my house, whores in my house, lies in my house, thieves in my house. Paul, guess what? God is faithful. He's faithful to everything he said he was going to do. And for us to look twice, I'm telling you, I thank God. That's the reason why I got here today. Because you know what I said? I said, Lord, I'm going to praise you. I said, I don't care if the whole church get mad with me. They can keep me. All y'all can get mad with me. Because I'm going to be like David. Remember, I'm going to be like David. Michelle got mad. For what? For what? What did, what did Michelle look out there? Let me tell you something. God did something for David. Y'all know what the Lord done did for me. I don't think that, but like I said, I was singing that song. Nobody can tell it like I can. And to watch this girl, and I'm saying this, it was just business as usual. Everybody just sat so nice. I'm crying like a baby. Barbara said, oh my God, son, you over there crying like a baby. I was crying like a baby because guess what? When I saw her, I saw some of mine. See, that's what people don't see. When people are looking at their child, they ain't looking at none of yours. I know what God can do for mine. The one that I couldn't find them, God bring her home every night. Got a good job. Oh, by the way, too, the other day, I'm going to show you. Ooh, you talk, you, I don't, please, I, you know, when I get in here, I take up so much time, I'm telling you. But I think, you know what? I have to get here. They give him the praise, because guess what? I give him the praise at home. Trust me, I do. I get to my room and holler and scream and jump up the Lord, because guess what? That's why he got me up. He said that everything that had breath praise the Lord. You think a praise is quiet? That everything that got breath praise the Lord. Heaven is never quiet. The other day, my granddaughter was on the way to work. She just got the job. Her girlfriend was driving to work, and you know Mayor, uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Sherelle Parker. Now, you know, you got them tenant windows. Yeah. They pulled them over, right? Casey called me because she couldn't intervene. She said, Mom, they stopped the car, pulled them over. Guess what? It was a gun in the car. First thing they did was get scared. You know what I said? I said, Lord, dispatch your angel. 
See, you don't even hear talk like that no more. God sent an angel. On the way to work, she ain't been working two weeks yet, Paul. Working a big business. You know, when I said, Lord, dispatch your angel, they crying like babies because it was a gun in the car. Now, guess what? These young people out here in some stuff, okay? Now, you now you sitting so nice and quiet. They around guns. They around drugs. They doing everything they think they're big enough to do. Let me tell you something. When I got the car back again, they had let them go because the gun in the car belonged to another girl and, and she was licensed to carry. Now, who intervened in that but Jesus? Who intervened in that but the Lord? couldn't get there. You know what it is? You can't, well, you can't get to God that already did. You know what I tell my children, Paul, in 1952, he saw this day. He saw, what's the date of the day? A uh, 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 May the 19th, 2024. He saw me here before I got here this morning. Because guess what? I was supposed to get here because my daughter said, go up the street. I'm not going up the street. Do you know how God found me in this church? You know what kind of condition I was in? Almost 50 some years ago, Paul. I never forgot it. Amen. I had a pastor that loved me. Unconditionally. He saw what I was. He knew what I was. And guess what? I didn't sit in the church and was a saint either. See, saints come in like they was always saints. I'm still being made. And I tell my children that all the time. I told Renee that this morning. I said, Renee, guess what? Everything ain't been fixed, but guess what, Paul? Everything ain't broke no more either. I'm telling you. It's that old oh, baby I know. Listen, I, don't, I can't even see who you are back there. Who's that? Is that Keith? No, I don't know if that's Keith or not. Okay, how you doing? You have to excuse me. I'm telling you, but I thank you, baby. I'm telling you, I praise you. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. He's been a keeper. A provider, all those things you know, yeah. love to say. Okay. He's a keeper, he's a provider, and all them kind of things. But most of all, guess what? He's saving my soul. That's the most yeah. important thing to me, that I make it in. I make it in. And also, too, you know what he's teaching me to do? How to treat people right. See, I just say you know how to treat people right. As long as you didn't bother me, I didn't bother you. Bother me, you have a problem. Now, you know what? All them scriptures come back to me. He said, don't you stretch forth your hand and do evil at all. Let me take care of all of that. Now, not that I, I got some problems. I still got a lot of problems. Trust me. Like I say, like I say for real. But you know what? Watching that girl in there. You know what I, you know what I was so, so pleased about? They didn't call her name. You know, sometimes people get so disgusted with somebody. They don't even, they don't even call your name. That's just how unimportant you are. But you know what? Woo! But you know what I told him? In fact, this is what I told him. I said, let me tell you something. But, and you know, church people are good for this, but they know so much other high revelations. You know what I said? I said, but the Bible said he died for the ungodly. Didn't he do it? Sometimes people forget how ungodly they really was. I'm telling you, you're looking at somebody now, ungodly, Lamar, from my head to my toe. But you know what? But the love of Jesus Christ. No wonder Paul said, what man of love is this? I'm going to bring Angie to church with me one Sunday. So you can see her. Let me tell you something. When I looked at her. Oh my God. Because I've been knowing her since she was a baby. And guess what? The ugliest one I all of them. But guess what? The prettiest one now the man. Trust me. You know, the Lord can take ugly and he can make pretty. Then he make pretty, then he make ugly. See, 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 some, see some of what you, see, like I said, you make, you make over them. And some people don't make over them at all. Some people, with me, I had five, and my kids had five different breakfasts out of Did you know that? I, I ran a wrestle when my children were little. Nobody got eggs, somebody got pancakes, somebody got this, somebody got that. But guess what? They got up and got this as bad as anybody else's for real. But you know why I love my children? Because I was the only child. I always had to fit in the family. I, if you had four or five kids in your house, I just weaved myself in and became one of the family all the time. That's been all my life. But you know what today, Lamar? I'm so glad. Who was that that said this morning they would never be lonely? I think it was, it was a cabin or something. Never learn. I'm so thankful. Y'all, y'all, you know what? Y'all just don't know today how grateful, 
how grateful. I, you know, I'm internally grateful. You know what I tell the Lord? I said, Lord, when I get in the church, I just take up, the last time, take up the whole service just about. But you know what I don't? But I got so much to thank him for. I am filled with the goodness of the Lord. I really am, because he's been so good to me. My son, I was saying the other day, my son is 62 years old. My son started getting high when he was 11. 62, man, he got 40, he, he had about 40 some years in on that crack, just about. And you know what? He never even got a, a prison record. Ain't that something? He out there doing whatever he think he wanted big enough to do. And he ain't never went to jail but one time, 30 days for child support. And he almost had a fit in there then. Oh, you got to get me up out of here. Why you sleeping? And I'm sitting up in prison. See, that, that was his mentality. You, you sleep? And I'm calling you, and I'm in jail. No, you need to be in jail because you need to pay your child support. That's all. But it's things like that that I realize. So many things the Lord has got my children out of. My granddaughter the other day, you know what I told her? I said, look how quick the Lord dispatched angels. They was having a breakdown on that highway with that gun in that car. Because number one, they didn't even know uh, uh, MJ had picked somebody up. See, this is another thing too. They get in cars, don't know what's in cars, drugs, anything else. And they're not, and, and they're, they're, let me tell you something, they're locking them up now for the way to kill them. You can't, I, I don't do, I don't know if nobody know about that prison system out there that's going on that passed the preach to us many years ago. Really, to be truthful. Paul know. I know Paul know. And, and that's what I'm saying. When in there right now. And guess what, Stephanie? Don't nobody mention that in the church. Their child, their child being in jail. Don't, don't, you, you know what, that's, that's. Uh, no, uh, uh, that, that's between them and the Lord. Yeah, it's between them and the Lord. You better stand in the gap for them. That's what I told my daughter. I said, yeah. And in that book of Ezekiel, you know what he said in Ezekiel? When he asked somebody to stand in the gap, I don't do you know what the Bible said. He couldn't find nobody to do it. Ain't that something? I'm standing in the gap for mine, yours, and everybody else's. Because guess what? It's yours today. It could be mine tomorrow. I got three or four of them grandsons out there, and you think of mine. It's a hurtful thing out there when you see what they do to them young boys. But you know what I said this morning to Renee? Trouble is good for us. Because we don't know how to act when we're not in no kind of trouble. We just, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't know how to act. At least I don't. We, we don't know how to act unless there's some trouble coming. I'm telling you. But I thank God. I pray. pray. I thank God today for trouble. Because you know what I found out? Let me tell you something. I told him down at, at with, with Angie. I said, I said, Angie, I said, you've been clean nine years and stuff. You know, you got that NA Bible. They, they worked as 12 steps, if you know anything about that. I got an NA Bible home, 12 steps. Now, you got 66 books in the Bible. We're going to work every one of them because every one of them work. That, them 12 steps don't work at all. Everybody done tried them. My son done been in about five, six, ten rehabs. But Paul, you know what I'm talking about. You go in the rehabs, one way you come out worse and even better. But you know what I thank and praise God for? What Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's nothing today that I've ever been ashamed of that ever went on in my house, 7243, 7241. It's a lot of things going on, but you know what I tell them? No, I learned this in wisdom. Some things only heaven can hold. A lot of things you can't, you can't, you can't, let me tell you something, you can't lay on nobody's bosom and do no whole bunch of confessing. Now, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it. God be my witness. The Lord has redeemed me. He's cleansed me by his blood. He got me up. And by the way, too, Rhonda get ready to go now for another second major operation out of my Rhonda, 30th of this month. But you know what I thank God for? I was able to go down to the doctors with her. See, I was supposed to be one laying up someplace. Isn't that, isn't that funny how the Lord turned things around? Glory be to God. I was supposed to be the one. I was at the doctor's last week. That cortisol a vein off again because I'm still bleeding. You know what I said this morning? Lord, I don't care if I bleed out. I'm going to praise you out. I can bleed out. I'm going to praise you out. You hear what I'm saying? I don't know. Glory be to God. I don't care if I bleed out. I'm going to keep praising him out because I got every reason to praise him out. I'm telling you, every time I turn around, I got blood coming from everywhere. But you know what I said? I said, Lord, when it's time, you stop the blood so I can praise you. I keep my tissues with me, and 
and I keep the praises in my mouth because he got me up so that I can praise him. That's the reason why he gets you up so that he can give me the praise. And I don't care what be going on in your life with your kids and everybody else. That's just how I feel. I feel that way. I always feel that way. And he keeps on keeping me up so that I can keep on praising him. The same I do the good way. I don't let my children stop me. I was loud in the world. Guess what? Like like Rodney right, 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 said that time, I play with the devil. I'm a dumb enough for Jesus, Lamar. And I don't care who don't like it. My children and everybody else. You know what he said? He said, who's my mother? Who's my father? I was the only child. My father got baby spewed all over a rolling stone. That don't much matter. But Stephanie, I'm going to praise him. Every, and then guess what? If y'all don't like my praise, then stop your ears up because I'm a praise him. I'm going to keep, I know, you're talking about somebody that God, when they went up in my mouth the last time, had to do another vein off. Miss Hill, now the next major thing they want to give me, they want to go in, in over here in my head, to go up to my neck, to go on my head, because they don't know where the blood is coming from. And there's so much of it, I should have had a blood transfusion, but the Lord stopped that. Right. And I'm, I'm you, good God, I tell you. And I can't praise him. I can't praise him. I can't praise him. I can't praise him. And he constantly keep doing stuff to me. Over and over and over and over again. That's what I tell him in my house. I said, guess what? You don't like this, there's the door. That's just how I feel about him tomorrow. Because I don't know how much time I got. Yeah. And guess what? He told me, he said, I'm giving you more time so you won't waste time. I'm not wasting time on little bit of stuff to talk to. And not that anything that people do is not important to them. But you know what's important to me, Lamar? That I make it. I want to make it. And I know, guess what? Him that started the work, he can finish it. What I tell you this morning, Lamar? I mean, Renee. I said his word will not come back to him void. He sent his word to do what he going to do. I don't care what. Get, you know, and so much stuff get in my way, I don't. So I, I can't even tell y'all all the stuff that get in my way. Sometimes I get in my own way. I do. I said, what would you do when you keep finding out the only one in, in your way is you? See, I, it, 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 it bothers me sometimes that I, I feel like I'm squeezed in. You know, I was nervous coming, and I'd never be nervous coming into church. And you know what? Sorry, just, just go right there in the chair and say, I don't know how to sit down. I don't, I don't know how to be quiet. Okay. I don't know how to do that. Okay. I wish I could, but I can't. Because guess what? He done did too much. Amen. And I said to myself, I said, oh, God. Don't nobody know like I know no more. And you can't tell it like I can all of my life. I'm telling you. I thought about that little old lady that come on a Sunday. I didn't know that lady from a can of paint. Who would let their two kids go with the lady? Because you know? the woman, the woman could have kidnapped. I knew she wasn't going to kidnap no project children. But I mean, she taking the church on a Sunday. No, I ain't she ain't bring them back. I kept them all day. Because I'm laying up high on a Saturday night. Can't see straight. And she said, and she was saying so nice. One Sunday I wasn't ready. She said, daughter, I'll wait for him. The Lord been with me every step of the way with that sordid, ungodly life. That I lived an ungodly life. Don't think for one minute because my husband was a heroin addict. I was touched by some of that stuff. You living in a dirty house, you think you're going to stay clean? Hello, somebody. Hello. I was around every, I was around pimps, whores, the whole bit. Yes, I was. But you know what? I don't done. You know what? But God never saw me like that. He said, he'll, he'll say what is as though it already was. Because he saw this day. And I know today, Lamar, I wasn't supposed to make. But I'm glad I got here again today. Amen. Oh, I'm so happy. Y'all don't know how happy I am. Because guess what? I might can't make it another Sunday. I might can't make it another Sunday. But I said, Lord, as long as you give me breath, I'm going to praise you. And thank you all for your time again. Once again. Praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. You know, he's done great things in people's lives that only he can do. And we got a testimony of that. You know, I, I never forget when I would 
and Brother Will was, you know, uh, we talk a lot, me and Brother Will. And, you know, he had great discernment to know what the Lord knew, what the Lord would tell him. And he said, the reason why people are quiet when you speak or when things or people are giving a testimony about it is because they're listening to you. See, it's kind of hard to holler and scream. And even, you know, you can cry, but when you're listening, everybody gets quiet. Because you're saying something that is beneficial to everyone. See, they're rejoicing inwardly about what God's doing. But when God speaks, everybody needs to listen. And you know what? That same blessing will be given to you because in your heart, you know you can rejoice in that, in that person. Because just like Paul said, but by the grace of God, so do I. Everybody knows what trajectory, what path they want. And you know what? Even if you did live in a household where you were blessed, where you didn't happen to go into those things, if you took a good look at yourself, you knew they were in you. See, one thing that every human can look at themselves, Jesus told you just through his word, we all are born in sin and shaping in iniquity. There is no not one that seeketh after, that desireth, that wants to serve him. He has to come in all of our lives and take us by the scuff of our necks and slap us around a whole lot and really let the devil show you what he's got in store for you if you don't follow the one that come to save you. So, you're blessed. Everyone that will has a, a heart and a mind, especially nowadays. Yes. I was just thinking, you know, you, you know that, that, that the enemy has been successful in taking the Bible out of, out of the schools. And see, that was where children heard. If it wasn't in the household, if you weren't blessed for it to be in your household, or you had an aunt or somebody that knew the Lord speaking it to you, that's where it came from. You could always hear it every day. It was you'd have a, a, a you'd have assembly, and you just get, you don't need a whole lot. See, you don't even have to read the whole book. Just open it up once. Really, if you open it up every day and just read a little bit, how you feel? Start your day, end your day with it. You'd be surprised how God will fill you up with His Word, and He'll start. You start to see things like you'll be able to call on, Hey Lord, I, I send an angel. Hey Lord, do this, protect that, watch over this, and you'll see Him do it. Because you'll see the results of what God has done because you prayed and asked him because our Lord is sitting right now at the right hand of the throne of grace with all power and all authority making intercession for us in our prayers. But anyway, you know, we just got so much to thank him for and praise him for because salvation is a growing experience in the Lord. You start to grow in him. He starts to do things for you that nobody else can do. He start, and the biggest thing he'll do for you is he'll change you. See, the most important thing that can happen to you in your salvation is the Lord's will be done in your life. And God's will is that no one is lost. Everyone is saved. That he manifests himself in our lives. He was saying about that man, if I can find a man, if I can find a person that will seek me. First, you got to seek him. But see, it's all about what he says. Because we come into life about how we are, what we think, and how we feel. People will say, oh, I tell the truth. And 